Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering arteries, capillaries, and veins. This is going to be a very short video, straight to the point, exactly what you need to know about these three. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you please to help support me and support this channel by liking this video, pressing that like button, subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, Nexus Nursing Institute. Dot com. All right, guys, so let's get started. Look what it says here. It says blood vessels deliver blood to the tissues. That's their job. Now, capillaries. Capillaries are very small, leaky blood vessels. As blood circulates through the tissues, some of the plasma is forced out of the capillaries. Remember, guys, plasma is the protein portion of blood, okay? The plasma contains nutrients, oxygen and other materials needed by the cells. So you you need to think of these vessels kind of as a subway system, right? And then the subway has many stops where things can get on and things can get off. That's the blood vessel. And the capillaries, this is where, you know, all the important things such as the vitamins, the oxygen, the nutrients, they can hop out of the vessels and go to the tissues where they're needed and all the bad things that the body really doesn't need those wastes, the nitrous waste, right? Carbon dioxide, it can hop in to go ahead and um, it hops in the bloodstream to go through the system so the patient can excrete it, okay? So let's keep going. Look at what it says. When it enters the tissues, plasma becomes interstitial fluid that's also known as tissue fluid. Interstitial fluid nourishes the cells and keeps them moist. This fluid, guys, that's in the uh, that plasma, guys, it has all the things that the tissues actually need to survive. Now, look at what this says. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. We're going to talk about arteries now. And that is absolutely true. So when we're talking about the arteries, guys, these are vessels that contain oxygen-rich um, blood to go to the tissues where they belong, okay? Arteries carry blood from the ventricles of the heart to the organs and tissues of the body. And remember, these um, this blood that's being carried to the tissues, they're full of oxygen, vitamins, nutrients, minerals, everything that those tissues need to survive. The smallest branches of the artery this is what's known as arterioles, and they're important in regulating blood pressure. And the way that they're important in regulating blood pressure, guys, they can actually constrict or they can dilate. So if the blood patient's blood pressure is already too high, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to dilate to slow down that blood pressure. And if the blood pressure is too low, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to constrict to bring that blood pressure up. So they're very; those arterioles are very important when it comes to regulating blood pressure. Now, uh, the wall of the artery or vein has three layers, also known as tunics. The inner layer, that's what's known as the tunica intima. That's the inner lining. It consists of the endothelium. When you see endo, endothelium, that means it's most inside, inner lining. Middle layer, that's the tunica media. And that um, consists of um, connective tissue and smooth muscle. And then you have your outer layer. That is your tunica adventitia, okay? That's a relatively thin layer in the arteries. And that also has connective tissue that's rich in elastin and collagen fibers. Smooth muscle in its wall allows, remember the, why well, I told you about the arterioles, they're important for blood pressure maintenance. They can either constrict or uh, dilate. Well, it's the smooth muscle that allows it to do this. Look at what it says. Smooth muscle in this wall allows the arterial to constrict. That's vasoconstriction. By the way, vasoconstriction will cause the blood pressure to go up. Or relax. That's dilation, vasodilation. And that will cause the blood pressure to what? Go down. And this changes the radius of the arterial. Obviously. Guys, think about it. If we have vasoconstriction going on, the um, radius of the arterial is going to be much smaller than if we have vasodilation and the radius is going to be much larger. Changes in blood flow are regulated by the nervous system in response to metabolic needs of the tissue and by demands of the body as a whole. For example, during exercise, 
Arterials within the muscles dilate, increasing by more than tenfold the amount of blood flowing to the muscles. I want you to think about this, guys. Imagine a person who's exercising. They're running, okay? Any activity, anything that you do that increases the uh, metabolic rate, it's going to increase the oxygen demand. If you're exercising, you're running, you need more oxygen. Your tissues need more oxygen because you're doing more. Where's the oxygen being carried in the blood? So guys, it makes sense that as that uh, metabolic demand of the body increases, that we're going to see vasodilation. Why? We need more blood flow that's carrying the oxygen, that's carrying the vitamins, that's carrying the ox uh, nutrients and minerals to get to the tissues. So it makes sense. Now, let's take a look at this. Capillaries capillaries are exchange vessels. So remember how we talked about arterioles? Those are the smallest portion. They can constrict, they can dilate. From the arterioles, blood flows through capillaries. Now, capillaries, these are tiny vessels that form extensive networks within each tissue. Capillary walls, they are thin and somewhat porous. Why do you think they're porous? Take a look. It permits plasma to pass through them into the tissues. Remember plasma, that's what carries, um, most of you know, the oxygen and minerals that those tissues need. Yeah, so that's why it's porous. It makes sense because they need to be able to get out. Capillaries permit oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and other materials to be exchanged between blood and tissues. So let's get this straight. What's jumping out of the capillaries to go to the tissues? The oxygen, the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients. What is jumping into the capillaries to go get excreted? The waste, such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen, okay? So I want you to take a look at this very quickly. So obviously here's the heart, right? So the blood's gone through um, all those chambers. It's gone to the lungs. It's picked up oxygen. Now we have oxygenated blood goes from the artery to the smaller arterial, to the capillaries, where all of the good stuff that's in the blood jumps off and goes to the tissues to feed the tissues. What is that word for the tissues being fed? It starts with a P, perfused. When you see that word perfusion, what they're really talking about is how much the tissues are being fed, those oxygen, vitamins, nutrients, okay? So all of the good stuff jumps off to go to the tissues and all the bad stuff like the waste jumps on to go now, look at what we're dealing with now. We went from arterial that went to capillary to now all the bad stuff that's in the blood is going from the venule, the much smaller venule, to the larger vein, back to the heart to go through the circulation for, for the body to get rid of it. Some of the waste, some of the CO2, the body gets rid of it by breathing it out. You breathe out your CO2. Most of it is circulated, goes through the kidneys and the body excretes it through the urine, right? Some through feces. But the point is the good stuff goes through the arteries and arterioles, then to the capillaries to get to the tissues. The bad stuff jumps onto the capillaries, go from the smaller venules to the vein, to the heart to go through the circulatory system for excretion. Lastly, let's talk about veins. Blood passes from capillaries into veins. As I showed you in the picture, you have the venules and the veins, the blood vessels that conduct blood back to the heart. Veins bring blood to the heart, unoxygenated blood to the heart because it needs to pick up oxygen, right? And oxygenated blood leaves the heart through what? The arteries. So veins bring unoxygenated and waste back to the heart. With the exception of the pulmonary veins, the blood vessels carry uh, the blood vessels carry blood that is poor in oxygen, and that is very true. That's the reason that blood is going to the heart, so it can finally go through all those you know the cham chambers and um, all portions of the heart, so it can finally get to the lungs to pick up oxygen. So all of the veins, guys, are very low in oxygen because that's why they're going to the heart to pick up oxygen, except, and you guys need to know this, the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins are high in oxygen, but all the other veins besides the pulmonary veins are low in oxygen. The one, last thing I'm going to go over with you guys, which I talked about already, are the venules. The smallest veins are called venules. And if you go back here, 
you're reminded of that. Going from the heart, artery, arterial, capillaries, where good stuff jumps off, bad stuff jumps in. Then we go to the smaller venue, to the vein, back to the heart. And one more illustration I wanted to show you here, guys. Here's the vein with mostly unoxygenated blood. Capillary that's very porous, so things can jump on and jump off. And then our artery, which is oxygen-rich blood. So the oxygen and all the good stuff that the tissues need flow through what? The artery. And then once it gets through the capillary network, remember it's very porous, that's where things jump on and jump off. And then the waste go from here, from the venules to the veins to go back to the heart to go through the system. And guys, that is it for this video, please. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover or cover more extensively. Don't forget every Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I always have a video that's released where I cover nursing questions. I teach you how to answer the questions, how to eliminate wrong answer choices. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.